everyone living in the West and most of the East have come to the conclusion that the first and second waves of feminism were a revolutionary time for women to thrive, gain the vote, and gain an equal pay in the workforce. However, many skeptics have now stopped and asked that maybe now feminism is not what it used to be, from why the heads of feminism have changed from great people into psychopaths to modern day examples of feminism going way out of hand. This is what has changed from the civil rights era to today in relation to feminism. To truly find out something for what it is, we need to look closer into it and see what it means. So, to contrast the difference between the forms of feminism, I will list the main goals of each one of them. First wave feminism was the wave that spawned all of the waves that came after it. With the origins of the French Revolution, it quickly travelled to other parts of the world, especially including the United States of America, which at the time was not very famous for women's rights. Regardless, what this wave of feminism mainly focused on was suffrage, or the right to vote. Women wanted to become equals with men and create the perfect society where everyone was equal. After 40 years of long wait, the American feminists finally succeeded with their goal for suffrage and they could finally vote. Although America was still not perfect for women, almost everyone was happy. This caused many other feminists around the world to start their own movements and finally receiving the right to vote. Now we can see the ripples of women's right to vote and have their opinion all around the world. Although feminists got the right to vote, after another 40 years, it became painfully clear that in the workplace they weren't getting equal pay to men. This one fact became the first building block for the second wave of feminism. The first place to get struck by second wave feminism was America. Although it had popped up in spots from time to time, suffrage was legalized for women. It didn't really show up until after the Second World War when the dust had finally settled for the first time in close to 40 years. The main reason for second wave feminism was equality at home and in the workplace. This time, feminists managed to get the equal pay and sexual harassment laws passed in 20 years after the second wave started. Half the time it took them last time. Now, everyone had equal rights everywhere across America and some other parts of the world. However, a portion of people were still not happy. Those really came back for another hit in the 2000s. Radical feminism. Radical feminism is really another name for third wave feminism, which mainly focuses on the 102 genders and hardcore cultural appropriation. They also have a sideshow in putting men at the lowest denominator of society, with examples such as Israel, more on that later, and America. This is Israel. A country who once wanted to reach a point of equality has gone overboard. Robert no longer deletes his ex-girlfriend's texts. They provide evidence to help him stay out of prison. Statistics show that the suicide rate among Israeli men is four times higher than among women. This is a case of superiority because a woman can just claim that a man raped her to gain full control of them by blackmailing them. They can also use it to get away from crimes just by blaming it on a man. This can be so easily manipulated because when humans get power, if not in very rare cases, they abuse that power. This contrasts everything that has happened in about 10 years in the past when claiming someone that committed a federal offense, they needed facts and evidence to support that claim that, that than just saying that that one person committed that crime. However, this is exactly what men used to do to women when they had superiority over them in, say, what, the Middle Ages? And even up to 150 years ago, a well-known example of this would be King Henry VIII and his wife and infertility. When a woman would not be able to bear him a child, he alleged something insane about his wife at the time had done and that person was killed. This is pure evidence that superiority of gender can be performed by both genders if they have enough power. Does it not seem great that our society nowadays is starting to resemble the Middle Ages? This is not the equality that feminists preach. Another way that women try to be superior over men is by pushing propaganda that men are sexist over women. Don't know what I mean? Look. All white people are racist, all men are misogynistic, all cisgender people are transphobic. 
This is a perfect example of someone who has been brainwashed by the left to hate men. She, he, has been part of the victims of a political movement that have told everyone to hate all white people and especially men. It has even gone to the point that where she has started to blame herself for being bad towards feminism, even though she herself is a hardcore feminist. I am racist, classist, ableist, and I probably contribute to many other systems of marginalization that I am not aware of. The worst part is that this kind of indoctrination happened 84 years ago as well. This was in Nazi Germany. Adolf Hitler started spreading propaganda that Jews were the cause of all of the people's problems, just the same way that the left is saying that men are the cause of all that's bad in the West at the moment. We all know what happened to the Jews, so if you just look at the facts and realize that it's the same thing happening to the West right now, I mean, history does repeat itself after all. Now, this is the part of my PSA where I move on to speaking about the past leaders of feminism and how they relate to modern feminists. This is another way to see how the feminist movement has changed over a huge span of time. Some of the most influential people who led feminism in the past were names such as Eleanor Roosevelt, who supported women's rights, is the wife of the president. There is also Coco Chanel, who wanted women to dress the same as men to show a sense of equality. Then, when you stroll into modern day society, you start s seeing people choosing to follow feminism to act as a garb for meeting. One of those people is Hillary Clinton. To show how little Hillary Clinton actually cares about um, women's rights, we're going to uh, unveil one of her cases that's been gone for 40 years now. It took a lot of different steps. I had to apologize. And she passed, which forever destroyed my faith in politics. <laughs> she explains how she was a lawyer for the rapist, and he did fail the polygraph test, and she still went against the girl who was raped. The prosecutors did have evidence of the ma man being guilty. Then Hillary Clinton took it away, never to be found again. N now, even as an adult, the 12-year-old still spoke out against Hillary Clinton and her bad doings towards the women's rights movement. So there it is. What third wave feminism is and how it's affected the world nowadays compared to the first and second waves of feminism and how they affected the times in the past. Feminism is not dead. It's still relevant in many places in the world. However, in places such as the US and the UK, it's not useful anymore and is in fact a detriment to society. Thank you for listening, D-Block. Uh, I will be accepting questions now, so just ask them.